Hello walkers and welcome back to City Walks. Although today, obviously we are not in the city. We're just outside of Livingston, Montana. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, and it is down there nestled into that little river valley. You can probably see it. Um, and in the distance, you can see the crazies. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today about a trip that I've been mentioning because I've had a couple questions on it. Um, but I do, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. First, I want to tell you about where we are. We are looking right now mm, pretty close to north, northeast. And those are the crazy mountains up there. Crazy snowy, crazy big, crazy steep. Uh, very cool range here. And I've talked about them in the past and how um, the context of other things around them changes the, the perception, to me anyway, of how big they are. <clears throat> For instance, right now, they look big, but they don't look that big uh, compared to, for instance, these mountains out here. And we will, at the end, we'll get down and we'll be able to look back up into Paradise Valley and you'll see some really big guys. But actually, they're not that much bigger than the crazies. It's a, it's a weird perception thing. We are, well, first of all, let me turn you around and I'll introduce myself. Hold on just a second and we're going to spin around. Hi there, my name is Henry. I will be your proxy walker today, your virtual travel guide, your co-discoverer. And that's the main thing there because that's what I do here. Uh, I'm going to spin you around again. Two, three. Um, and I do talk on these. So if you're looking for a quiet walk, uh, I have one of the tabs on the YouTube channel has a bunch of other great channels for that sort of thing. Uh, so check those out. <clears throat> um, anywho, we are walking down Wine Glass Road, or at least, actually it's not Wine Glass. We, we will feed into Wine Glass Road, but we're on the Wine Glass. And if you've seen our other Livingston walks, um, I've talked about the Wine Glass quite often. If you haven't seen them, go to the website, citywalksvirtualtours.com. And I have all my walks there by location. So continent, nation, and then for the US state. Um, and then by walk time. So you can pick out whichever ones you want. And there's also a little search field there. Uh, and my, oh, I'm gonna tell you about the trip in just a minute. Don't let me forget about that. Uh, I'm gonna spin around here, not really spin, but we're gonna turn and see. And up here is the wine glass area and it got its name and I, I didn't realize this for years, but uh, there was a guy that was cutting wood up here, a landowner, and it just so happened that it ended up looking like a wine glass shape. So there's a wine glass shaped um, clearing with snow on it in the winter that was very stark and it looked like a wine glass. So this little hilly area here is called the wine glass. This whole uh, acreage here is the wine glass. And we're going to head on down here. <clears throat> so I say co-discover. I love pointing out little details, little things that I know or notice. And over here on the left is a little bluebird box. So we get mountain bluebirds here. And a lot of ranchers, a lot of landowners will put up these uh, bluebird boxes. I think at one point there was a some concern about the populations and people have made a concerted effort to put up boxes and nesting boxes for them. So when they migrate through here, uh, which they should start doing in the near future here, um, then they will have a place to, a safe place to nest and then they can eat bugs and stuff like that. I don't know if I said this already, I don't think I did. It is uh, 52 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 degrees Celsius, about 1 p.m. And it is actually St. Patrick's Day today, better known as my dad's birthday. We had a, we had a lovely breakfast with him this morning. Um, anywho, we're going to head down this road. And you can see there's a lot of houses out here on larger lots. Not, I wouldn't say a lot of houses, but not zero. Um, and they tend to be bigger homes, but not all of them are. They've sort of been in development for a long time, and there's a network of roads up here. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can tell, but there's some cars passing laterally in the distance, and that's Interstate 90. 
the topography out here is pretty dry, actually. We're on the, ooh, it's a north facing slope, uh, but also western or facing east. So it gets a lot of sun, not a lot of water. You can see sort of a cliffy area there. Um, looks kind of what I would call rattlesnakey or snaky. And they do have those out here. And again, they're prairie rattlers. While they are venomous, they're the only venomous snake in Montana, native to Montana. And they are very much not aggressive. And they, I think they have the least toxic venom or least venomous is what I read. Wouldn't want to get bitten, but it's, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's not a frequent occurrence. You can see some snow still up here. It's been melting off. And this is why I'm on a road today. You can see this is mud. Well, this is what the trails look like, especially if there's trees casting shadows, which allows the snow to stick around a little bit longer, which is great. We want that, but we're getting into mud season and um, trails can, it's not great for trails to be hiked on when they're muddy. It's not the end of the world, but um, it's also not as much fun <laughs> to hike in mud in my humble opinion. Oh, the trip. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned that my son and I are gonna take a trip to France coming up here, <clears throat> excuse me. And I wanna tell you a bit more about that because I've had a few questions about it. And one, it's a bike trip, it's not a walking trip. Uh, we're gonna, we've gotten some, ordered some bikes. We're gonna load up and do a bike tour across France along one of their many, 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 many bike paths. And we're gonna eat croissants and enjoy the Loire Valley. So the questions were, are, are we gonna film? And the answer is yes, that is my intention to film both a bunch of walks, if I can, if my legs will hold up, and also for their other channel that we have, the Traveling Mel, who is my wife, uh, Traveling Mel channel, which is more of a family travel oriented um, channel, sorry, which I have sort of let go by the wayside a little bit recently in the last couple of years. But we have a ton of older videos on there from our trips to Europe and Central America and out west and back east and all that sort of stuff. So, um, and then some blog posts, probably on Traveling Mail, but also travelingmail.com, but also possibly on City Walks, virtualtours.com. Anyway, that's the story on our trip. We leave at uh, in about a month and a half. I pushed it back two weeks because I realized that we were going to go in mid-April. And I realized that it was gonna be a little chillier than I wanted to. A few things weren't quite open yet. And I thought, and we were waiting on some gear, so. He, my son is turning, is 17, so he'll be 18 uh, in, oh my gosh, in about nine months. And so it's kind of a big father-son trip we're gonna to do together. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I want to thank our Patreon supporters for your wonderful support. Uh, you can There's some links down in the description below, so check those out if you're interested in supporting the channel. <clears throat> I don't do a whole lot of extras, but I do really appreciate it, and I give you guys a shout out every time. Well, uh, sometimes I forget. And anyway, it's very much appreciated, and it's a huge help, so thank you this uh, private gate here. This is sort of a typical, or maybe not a typical, but you know, kind of a ranch style decoration. This sort of log gate. I don't think these are sunflowers, but maybe they are from last year. These sort of dried, tall things. They tend to show up in disturbed areas along roadsides. 
And obviously this is a disturbed area from plowing and grading just to keep the road in shape. Um, but they're, they're yellow, they look like sunflowers and they're very beautiful. It's a nice little valley here. You can see on the northern exposure, you got a little bit more snow sticking around and you can see trees, uh, bigger trees on the north facing slope. And that is because of the snow sticking around. They retain a little bit more water. Here in the northern hemisphere, uh, you know, this, especially in the winter and spring, well, other than direct summer, the sun is a little bit to the south. And so that gives just a little bit of extra shade for those. And it has an impact. And then here, let's take a look at these rocks here. This is all private property, so I'm not gonna climb up there. Uh, kind of neat sandstone and ledgy and snakes like to get up there and sun themselves in the spring or not probably too far away from the snakes getting out. We got a couple months yet, I guess. And I think I mentioned before on our Strickland Road Walk, again on the website, the, we went over there and looked for hibernaculums last year, I think, last spring. And maybe we'll probably won't be able to do it this year because we'll be gone. Uh, Anyway, we didn't really find any big ones, but we found several snakes and we observed them from a respectful distance. So if you're interested, that direction is the basically Yellowstone River heads south and it, it doesn't head south, it comes from the south out of Yellowstone National Park. Ooh. I don't know if you heard that, but right at this, where this driveway, red driveway comes out, I think they were, they were either Chuckers, but I think they were Hungarian. Oh. Two more. Hungarian partridges popped out. They 
hang out in cover coveys. There might be some more in here. And they're about the size of a large California quail. And if they're Hungarian, well, I guess, I think the Hungarians partridges are introduced. Well, I know those are, but I'm not sure about the partridges, the like um, proper partridge. And they're a ground dwelling covey bird, as you probably saw. Hmm, only four. They can give you a startle when they erupt like that. Well, over there, you can kind of see some, uh, I don't think they're prairie dogs, I think they're ground squirrels. They're little ground dwelling rodents, they're out now. Just noticed them, started noticing them this week with the warmer weather. Another look at the snowy ridge there. The other thing that will give you a startle is in the woods around here, and they have them back east in the US, and they are ruffed grouse. They have three, no, four, five types of grouse in Montana, at least. And they are rough grouse, which live in sort of the lower timbered areas and thick areas. Uh, and they're, hmm, they're about the size of a small chicken. And then you have blue grouse, and those are about the size of a rough grouse, I think. And they live a little higher up. And then you have spruce grouse. And I think those are the ones that are live up the highest. I might be transmutating, uh, transposing the, t the blue and the spruce. But anyway, they're a lot bigger. And then you've got sharp-tailed grouse, which live out here in sort of this kind of terrain, maybe a little flatter. And um, then you have one of my favorites, the sage grouse, and they are pretty big. They're not, um, not the size of a turkey, but hmm, maybe the size of a domestic duck. One of those big white ones. Um, anywho, they're the ones you can see out dancing. You can go to one of my other many YouTube channels called uh, Amazing Nature therapy or something amazing nature relaxation therapy i can't oh there goes another one that is i believe a hungarian or a hun might be some more we're going to get some dogs here because we are oh sorry to swirl i was hoping another one there there's they're hiding in here anywho we're going to pass some friends who have their dogs we're planning a river trip. We're gonna walk past. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so you can go there and I've got um, a fair amount of footage there. And then I think I might even have some 360 footage of sage grouse. I'll try to remember to put some links. Here come the dogs who I know and know me. Hi Bosco. Hi Spur. Um, Anyway, they are super cool. They do this dance in April, late March, early April. So right about starting to start out now or soon. Um, and they do, they have these big guller sacks. So they, they gather on these places called leks, L-E-K-S. And these are dancing grounds or display grounds. And they go out there before dawn and start plopping and they make this plopping sound. I can't imitate it, but it carries for miles and miles out on the, and this is out on the prairie. Um, and they'll all gather and they'll sort of compete and hit each other with their wings, the males will. 
And then every so often a female will sort of saunter around and observe and take stock of, the, of what's on offer and then um, do their little mating thing, the cloacal kiss, and off they go. And it lasts for about a month. And it is, it's a spectacular display of nature. I, I just find it fascinating. So here's a chicken. <laughs> and I'm going to show you this chicken because that is a little bit smaller than a sage grouse. About, about the same size. They work, the males weigh up to about seven pounds. And for a bird, that's pretty heavy because of the whole hollow bone thing. You can see the uh, pointy peak there is Livingston Peak. And you can climb up there. It's not too bad, it's, a little, it's pretty steep, but you can drive up a good chunk of the way. Uh, and then this other mountain in the foreground uh, where there's a, a phone tower up there, I think you can see. Um, there are private lots up there. There's no services or anything, but you, people have cabins up there or shacks or whatever, and you can get up there in the summer and in the winter if you're willing to not drive um, and stay up there and you have some peace and quiet. And then to the right, you start to get it to see some of the amazing mountains and peaks of the Absarica range. Really are spectacular especially with the snow on them and the shadows. Ah, oh, it's, it's lovely. Here is a cattle grate that is no longer in use. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but usually there's no dirt in here. So they just, it's more like this little open end and cows and horses and other livestock can't step on those round things with their hooves and Otherwise they'll break their leg and they know better. So they don't do it and it blocks them in and you can still drive through. Off to the right, we'll see some, we'll have the chance to see some of the ground squirrels. And I don't think, I think they're ground squirrels. I don't think they're prairie dogs here. I will try to link to the sage grouse footage and also prairie grouse footage, but I have a tendency to forget. There's some couple of these little guys out there. Uh, so if I don't, please remind me. Uh, it'll probably be linked on the web page rather than YouTube. I think YouTube frowns on external links. Isn't that spectacular? So when we float in the summer on the Yellowstone, we float right below all that stuff. Well, not right below, but pretty close. This is a working ranch to our right. <clears throat> I don't remember what it's called, but hopefully it'll have a sign up here. Wine glass ranch. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not sure exactly what they raise. If it's cows or just hay. You can see a bunch of hay stored off to the left here. Big round bales. And those fence-like things off to the left are actually snow fences, portable snow fences. Uh, right about, right around in there, I can't really see because of the light. Um, wooden, 
And the, what they do, I'm going to curve off to the right here, uh, out here on the flat, the wind comes off of, and I've spoken about the wind before, the wind comes down off of Yellowstone and off of these mountains on both sides of this valley. The cold air sinks, comes down off of there, and the valley beyond here is, is you know, fairly wide, but it's narrowed down at this, uh, this pinch point, this canyon, and so when it comes out of here, it can be going 50 or 60 miles an hour in the winter. And if there's any snow, the snow is dry, it blows around, drifts up over this road. And rather than coming through and trying to bust through with a plow every day, they put the snow fence up and what happens is the snow, blowing ground snow, hits that fence and is slowed down enough to fall. And it's in the lee of the fence a little bit which means that um, <clears throat> it's not as likely to move, and so it creates a drift behind the fence rather than on the road. And it's just a simpler way of uh, mitigating that. And uh, it's not really a subdivision back in here, but I think they do have some cooperative agreements in the ranch, I guess. Um, allows those to be put on their property for their benefit as well as others and I guess stores them as well. pivot sprinkler. I don't know if it's actually a pivot here, but rolls around on those wheels. Big pump shoots water out there and it sprays all over this hay field as it rolls. <clears throat> now look at that view. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just cannot even get over it. It's such a beautiful day too. sod digger um, for those there's a lot of interest in moving to Montana the, the Yellowstone TV series um, a lot of travel people a lot of best of lists and you do get these beautiful beautiful days like today but as I mentioned you also get 50 mile an hour winds and uh, snow that blows and drifts and uh, sub-zero temperatures and it can be pretty rough and just long, long winters. Uh, I love it and a lot of other people love it, but just think about that and consider it before you really commit to it. Uh, I was talking online, actually, a guy that has moved over to Bozeman. And I think he's, he says he's having a great time. I think that's what he was saying. Loves it a lot. And uh, it's a great town over there. I also just read that the median home price is like $1.16 million or something like that for a single family home. That might be a reference to that house up in Kalispell that raised such a ruckus. But I think that's what I read in the paper. <clears throat> just cannot get over that view.
So these are all hay fields off to the right and off to the left. My son and I did a sort of training ride the other day of about 27 miles. It was on a road similar to this. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's called washboarding. Um, and if it's called something different where you are, let me know, I'm interested. And it's basically the traffic creates this ridge pattern similar to a washboard or a corrugated um, metal. And on a, on a car, it's bad enough, but man, on a bike, <laughs> it's, uh, you're definitely looking for the smoother, smoother options. The traffic out here is on Highway 89. It's not an interstate, but I believe it is a federal highway. And it's mainly two lane in this area. And then off to the north here, half mile a mile, it turns into, I believe, maybe it just has a turning lane. But in the summer, when people are headed to Yellowstone, it and down to the launch their boats in the river, it gets busy. At least for out here. You can see some ridges in the snow berm here where a tractor's gone through and I wonder if it's been to move those snow fences. I'm gonna walk out here. This is private land, but I just wanna see something because it looks like a bird got got. It did. Look at all these feathers down here. Those look like, I guess, goose. See them all in here? cycle of life. Something didn't make it, but something got to eat. So, One thing I would like to comment that many people are not aware of, if you find a dead hawk or owl or eagle, unless you have a permit, you are not allowed to take or possess their feathers or any part of that animal. Uh, they're protected by a treaty, international treaty, I believe. It's a, and it's a federal law. And you hear every once in a while people getting these, having picked up some hawk feathers or something and having them in their windscreen visor or sunscreen and end up with $10,000, $20,000 fines. I don't know if that's apocryphal or if it's real, but you know, just letting you, just throwing that out there. Let's say that.
You guys, what a beautiful day to be out for a walk. And I hope I know a lot of you are just here for the travel aspect. Some of you are here for relaxation, sort of play it in the background. That's great. If you're on your treadmill, awesome. Um, get after it. And, you know, let me know in the comments section. I, I meant I usually try to say something at the beginning, but I've been trying to get away from saying that in the beginning because you don't really want to hear that. But anyway, love your comments. I love getting your comments. Um, I refer to them often when I'm walking because they make me think or they ask interesting questions or they give me information and you provide your own memories and sharing. And I just like that sense of community. It gives me a lot of joy when I'm making these videos. <clears throat> you know, I, I go through and I try to answer every single comment that comes through the filters because YouTube has some kind of wonky filters. And I'll end, up, I'll end up getting these messages every once, it's kind of rare, but every once in a while I'll get a message two months later or three months later. And I feel bad because I, I make a concerted effort to reply and hear this message has been sitting out there for months. And then of course, if it's uh, troll-like messages, I just delete them and block them. So. Uh, rather than reply. Okay, US Highway 89. I want to thank you guys for joining me on today's virtual treadmill walk, virtual walking tour here on the wine glass, at the bottom of the wine glass. We'll get a little glimpse off of the crazies again. Oh, and there's this bike path too. It's great. It Here's somebody biking. Uh, uh, no motor vehicles. We saw somebody roller skating early, earlier. Hi there. Uh, but this goes all the way into town and then off to the right, we turn to our right. You can see it goes, continues on and actually goes down till you get to Trail Creek Road just at the other side of the canyon and then you can get on some dirt road with basically as close to zero traffic. All right, thanks again, guys. I appreciate you joining me today. I'll be walking again with you soon next week. Not sure from where just yet, uh, but until then, keep on stepping.